I went to the Salton Wastewater Treatment Plant. Um, I think it was about a week ago, a week and a half, or maybe even two weeks. But this video was long delayed due to several reasons. I had to go somewhere, then my brother caught COVID, so I couldn't go in here. Luckily, I didn't get it. But this is the salt and wastewater treatment plant, and I took samples there. The reason I was there was to try and get rid of the wastewater treatment plant plants ileozoma worm problem and to help balance out the water. Here is one of the organisms we saw there in these samples. This was the first sample, I believe. It was from some of the effluent, which is the wastewater that goes in. And what these plants are doing is they're taking the wastewater and they're making it clean enough to get into the river. But they use the biological process to help them decompose it with bacteria and other organisms. But some organisms, of course, are going to eat those, and that's part why I was there, to help minimize that. There are annelids, and what you were seeing earlier was a tardigrade, and there are a lot of collapses swimming around, which are small decomposers, which are very nice to have on a wastewater treatment plant because, of course, they help decompose the waste and make it safer once it goes into the river. And these are all annelids. Um, it's the phylum. I haven't been able to get their identification, but the last time I went there, um, it was actually with my class to visit it and learn about it, but I went back to do this. I made some, well, they made some changes there that I recommended to get rid of the ileozoma, and it worked. The maximum amount of ileozoma I found on one slide was three ileozoma worms. Although since that happened, an increased population in their prey came up, which was all of these annelids, as you can see here, and there's another small tardigrade. And next to that tardigrade is a bunch of eggs. There's actually, um, I believe, three tardigrades in this picture right now, three on the same frame, which is a bit odd, but all of those eggs are actually tardigrade eggs, so soon they will hatch. And you can see that little t collops, which is a small ciliate. Um, but I don't know why the tardigrades got here, but they're here and they're breeding. It's not really a problem to the water there, and it still keeps the balance. They're not really prey to anything, and they're not predatory either. They mostly eat algae. And I'm guessing their population will go down because there was a bunch of algae there. But while I was there, oh, there's an epistillus colony there. But while I was there, um, I increased, well, we increased the dissolved oxygen level to get rid of some of the algae. My theory was that if you were to increase it, it would raise more um, uplotes. And then those uplotes would eat the algae. There's another small ciliate there, I believe it's a loxifilum. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there's also a bunch of testate amoebas. Um, most of them don't have amoebas in them, they're just the testates or the shells. Here's another big tardigrade. This is one of the larger ones. I don't believe I've ever seen this order before. They seem new compared to the ones in my tardigrade video. But um, there's a lot of tardigrade eggs. They're those um, white things, and there's also carchesium, which look kind of like them. And there's another tardigrade there. It's pretty hard to see. And here you can see it closer up in those archesium. And basically this is what human waste looks like when it's going into the treatment process. This is what this is. This was dried up since I had to um, transport them back to my microscope. Um, there were three ileozoma on this slide here and I think they're now being preyed on by something else, which is very good. Um, the last time I was there, there was about 50 ileozoma on one slide, which was causing issues. But 
3 versus 50 is a very good ratio. Um, and it's helped a lot. Also, by the way, I talked about the dissolved oxygen content, and it did help with the algae, which is why I think the tardigrade population will go down now, because they eat the algae, which is probably why they were there. But since they now have something else eating it, they'll probably stop breeding as much, and their population will eventually go down. Of course, it's not really that bad of a thing, but some people like to watch them. And there's more tardigrade eggs there in a tardigrade's exoskeleton. And you can see a little tardigrade going through the dirt with its legs kicking. I tried to not spend much time on the tardigrade since throughout this whole thing there are a lot of tardigrades. There's another tardigrade there next to that annelid. But you can see those bright yellow insides of the annelids. And of course, annelids are the same thing as bristle worms. There's two tardigrades, a smaller one and a larger one, and it appears that there's actually a juvenile in the middle of them. And there's also another one to the left with its eggs. And there are eggs all over here, but that generation probably won't breed as much since there's a decrease in the content of algae. But um, the algae needed to go down because the levels were hard to clean and it's hard to operate um, some of the equipment there with so much algae in them. Um, this is it in bright field, but with so much stuff on the slide, it did not go too well. Should have opened the condenser, really but still it wouldn't have looked all that good, but there's just more epistillus. There were Vorticella, epistillus, and carchesium, so a lot of petrotrix on this slide. Two colonial, one solitary. The solitary Vorticella can't, they don't really pose any sort of threat, but the colonies, if they get too large, they can be somewhat harmful to other organisms since they attach to them. And there's more amoeba testates. I should have focused on one and stopped, but I didn't think to. There didn't seem to be many testate amoebas actually inside of them, but they can live in those, and obviously they did at one point, which means there's still a large population of testate amoebas. More tardigrade eggs. Also, this is mostly unedited. I really only took out the parts in between these segments. And this was the sludge from the bottom of that chamber. By the way, the photo at the beginning, that's where all of the effluent, I mean, effluent <laughs> starts out. And then paddles hit the water. There are small paddles, and when they slap the water, they bring down oxygen and nitrogen with them. And it's dissolved oxygen, of course. And those oxygen levels are what are controlled. When I was there, we um, put them up to 1.7 milligrams a liter. It was on 1.6 milligrams a liter, but that was too low because it started causing algae growth. And it didn't allow for that many euplotes and that much stuff that eats the algae. And if you look closely, there's a few amoebas, of course, they're all over here. It's not enough to be harmful, though, because it's not like they're really predatory to any of these organisms. And I don't think they eat the collapses, which are really all that matters here. And this was the solids from the outside of that chamber that has the paddles. The solids build up on the sides, and I thought that there would be a larger population of annelids. That was my hypothesis, but I was actually incorrect. There was a smaller population because there wasn't enough water. Those chunks were half submerged, and it turns out they couldn't live in those conditions. This is another slide. I forgot which component this was. Um, 
this was supposed to be dialoguing them and dialoguing all of these slides, but that didn't go so well because I forgot what this one is. This is the one I wasn't sure about. But it was about the same as the effluent samples from that chamber, and there is a lot of tardigrades still, and a lot of annelids. Hopefully the annelid population will also go down since we boosted the dissolved oxygen to 1.7 um, milligrams a liter. There's two tardigrades together. This is 40 times right field, that's why it looks so odd. But it does have a 3D effect and it looks kind of like phase contrast to at the same time. Usually you don't do this, but I think that in some scenarios when you're looking at something thick, it does actually look nice. Um, because bright field wouldn't have enough depth of field, really. And the majority of this slide is mostly all the same. And those bits are dried up. There wasn't much in those. The annelids kind of... All the water went to the larger organisms. and there's another small collops there. Those are the decomposers, and I actually saw a few of them eating off some ciliate, but they weren't by the time I brought it back. They have a microscope there, of course, so I examined it twice. I recorded it once, I used my microscope on it, but there's a tardigrade there, of course. And unlike my other video I did with annelids, I've actually done two videos, I believe, now, excluding this one. Um, the one with platyhelminthes, the flatworm, which I think was a planarian. That one, um, that is different. These are not platyhelminthes. These are just normal worms. They would be closer related to an earthworm than platyhelminthes although those are also annelids, these are way different. These were the ones from that worm video, I forgot what it was called, but it was looking at a very large one of these. That's pretty much what these are, but they're a bit smaller than that one. It's probably from the same genus though, but I couldn't find any resources on actually beginning to identify these, which was kind of a shame. Also, there's another tardigrade in the middle there. It's not really focused on it right now. But it is worming around, and on this slide, there are a few collapses. One being at the bottom left. And on this slide, I remember that both of these slides, they both look similar, and their similar environments meant that they both had a similar ileosoma population, around three for both sides, which is not that bad. I couldn't find them. I think I actually did find a few, like, ones that had dried up, but those weren't really interesting to look at. A lot of people like looking at ileosoma since their oil drops are somewhat pretty, but here they are more of a, pre a pest. I've tried to cultivate them before, but I was unsuccessful, but when I went there for the first time, I got to see a lot of those. And there's more collapses. Those are everywhere, pretty much. Not really everywhere, but on every slide there was one. And I think I might have also seen a collapse decomposing a tardigrade exoskeleton at that place with the microscope. More testate amoebas. And there's also some con coscinodiscus algae, which is, it was actually in some of my plankton videos. 
in the salt water. But these coscinodiscus, you can see their round shells, are actually freshwater ones. There's both freshwater and saltwater species of coscinodiscus. Um, these ones I wouldn't say were as neat to look at as those ones. But of course those are a type of algae, um, which they're trying to get rid of, but it's not the same green algae and spirogyra algae. The algae wasn't actually spirogyra, but it looked somewhat close. And those cords going through the worms hold their muscles and their digestive tracts. So that's what those are. They're constantly contracting, which is how they move. With their bristles, they're able to move quite a ways, but not really that fast. And that also allows them to easily move through the dirt, unlike tardigrades, which sometimes have a hard time with their claws. And some ciliates can't go through the dirt at all. Well, it's not really dirt. It's made of a bunch of different compounds. But it's not really fertile. Well, it is, but not to that extent. It can be used as fertilizer, actually. I meant to cut this part out, so sorry. <laughs> I was getting another slide, but um, I don't want to get rid of the narration, of course. So I'm just going to leave that there. This is the next slide. Not exactly sure what this one is yet. I can't see what it is, but I know it looks pretty good. There's not many aliozoma, well actually none that I've seen so far. Anyways, they'd probably be dead and only a few annelids compared to the other ones. So whatever this is, once we find out, it is fine. And there's of course tardigrades everywhere. And here is a nematode. Those are nice because they are decomposers. I think this was actually the solid slide and the other one was a different slide because I remember finding a nematode in the solid slide. Uh, that's another testate, that brown looking thing, and those white circles are the shells of coscinodiscus. And there's a few strands of algae here. Not that much though, so it seems to be okay. Um, there, I didn't have enough time on that blue looking thing to actually identify it. Um, there's another loxifilum, which is a type of ciliate. It's somewhat related to dilaptus and um, Lacrimaria oler. Here is a tardigrade from that sample. It is a large one. And here's just the outskirts of it. More tardigrade eggs, those ones right there, are actually hatched tardigrade eggs. The other ones are full white um, because they have embryos in them. In those ones, the embryos have actually left. There's another loxifilum. Again, they're similar to a lot of organisms like Lacrimaria. Those were all over this slide. 
and there's a Bedeloid Rodifer, actually. I didn't see many of those. I was very surprised that there were only a few of those in this sample. I guess it's because Rodifers rarely eat algae, but the tardigrades do. And at first I was wondering why there was Rodifers without um, tardigrades. Well, I mean tardigrades without Rodifers. But um, that's because those sorts of Rodifers, the Bedeloids, they do not eat algae as most Rodifers, or at least they don't primarily eat algae, so there would be no point for them. Here is the algae sample. This is what was so annoying. This is only a small bit of it. There was a lot more than just this. There was a lot more water, of course, but the edges dried out. There wasn't much in the algae, and when it was there at the treatment plant, and I was looking at it with the microscope there, there were not many uplodes, which I thought was partly why um, there was so much algae, because there wasn't much eating it besides just the tardigrades. There were a few uplodes, but not any really considerable amount that's going to help the algae problem. So goodbye, I hope you liked this video. Um, it was delayed, so sorry, but the main purpose of this video was just to record these organisms. Um, I meant to keep track of what slides these were, but I lost track of it um, when I transported them. And once I took the video, it just got more mixed up.